I'm Ashton Addison from EventChain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Rice from the Rice Crypto Show. Hey man, welcome to the show. It's great to see you again. It's great seeing you, man. I appreciate you inviting me on the show. I'm looking forward to this talk. Yeah, me too. There's so much to talk about. So much has been happening in the crypto space uh, in the past few months. You know, I think we last, you know, we've done a lot of virtual shows together, but it was last the World CryptoCon in Vegas where we were in that in-person event. And I'm, I'm looking forward to get, getting back to those in-person events. Uh, but if yeah, you, yeah, that particular event was a lot of fun, man. I really enjoyed that after party. That's I think the first time we met was at that after party. So that was a really cool time. Yeah, and there's still a few months here till the World CryptoCon comes back again. So let's hope all goes well and we can get back there in person. Uh, but for this interview, it'd be great if you could kick off with a little bit of background on yourself and you know how you first got into cryptocurrency and getting up to this point now. All right. Well, the how I found cryptocurrency, I kind of try to start as much as I can from the beginning. Uh, I started studying, um, going to school for business administration, and started studying economics and um, before that, I really didn't care a lot about money or monetary policy. And we're only talking like five, six years ago. So at this time, I start doing um, my going down these rabbit holes and doing my research and, and kind of discovering how our monetary system works and, and talking about the Federal Reserve, fiat money and fractional reserve banking. And just really was kind of disgusted about it. Um, even talking to my teacher about some of these feelings, um, she disagreed. And um, even the, the college I went to, they were trying to claim that the Federal Reserve was part of the government. And I was trying to explain that it wasn't. So that really kind of opened my eyes to a lot of things. And at that point, I was already kind of getting involved in precious metals, which was at the time the way I was looking at preserving my wealth. And then I started stumbling upon uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Um, it was sometime around 2016 that I had been hearing a lot about it and doing a little bit of research, not really um, doing much more than that. And then in school, there was a couple times where I was going to do presentations on something blockchain based or talking about Bitcoin, but I was still kind of new to the space and didn't really feel like I could do a, a good job of explaining it in a presentation, especially in a short time period. But, you know, to shorten that story, um, early 2017, I decided to go ahead and start uh, investing into Bitcoin and diversifying in other cryptocurrencies and really went down the rabbit holes uh, that I mentioned earlier. There's so many rabbit holes you can go down and I uh, just really got sucked into it. I saw the power and potential of what Bitcoin and blockchain technology will offer as creative destruction and bringing us that power and taking away the element of the power that governments and central banks have with fiat money. So if that if that makes sense, that's kind of where I come from and how I got involved in crypto. Definitely. And I really resonate with that because I too did a business administration and was studying economics. And it was really just the great combination between technology and, and finance, right? And this is the very forefront of innovation with Bitcoin and all of these other distributed ledgers. So it's so exciting. You know, I, I could see how you it would attract to it. And now you've produced so much content related to the space, educational, informational. Uh, were you creating content before you got into crypto as well? And also, what do you like most about being an independent journalist? Okay. So yeah, I'm really glad you asked um, that you mentioned journalists because I don't look at myself as an influencer. I definitely look at myself as a content creator and a journalist. So I appreciate you saying that. Now, um, as far as the journalism and what I did as far as um, before I started my YouTube channel in cryptocurrency education, uh, I was a musician and I was doing a magazine, wrote for a couple different magazines. So I consider myself an artist and I always created different things, but never actually went into the video element. So when I started my channel originally, the beginning of 2018, I was starting out with my laptop, using my laptop mic and camera and just just getting started. And as I was going, I started improving my cameras, uh, my editing qualities and things like that, improving how I do my thumbnails and learning about marketing and keywords. And so... I've always looked at myself as an artist. And once I got involved in cryptocurrency, I knew that education was going to become an important factor, especially for new people coming into the space. Um, I look at what we do is offering tech support. 
So starting a YouTube channel, I felt was an opportunity for me to be able to voice some of the things that I'm concerned about and help educate and empower people in, in not only just cryptocurrency and blockchain, but also with economics mm -hmm. and the philosophies of anarchy and voluntarism, because I do mm -hmm. identify as both. Very interesting. And you do have quite a bit of content that you've produced educational wise on YouTube as well. But I'm curious on your take on the recent censorship about Bitcoin related and cryptocurrency related topics on YouTube. You know, have you been affected by it personally and what should be done about this situation? This is a great question because censorship is actually becoming a very important thing that people need to start paying attention to. Um, because it's getting to the point that if people don't start paying attention and saying things now, we're actually just going to lose control and the situation is going to get a lot worse. And with that being said, yes, I've, my channel itself was affected in some different forms of censorship and shadow banning. And me in particular, uh, it was the end of last year, just, it was right around Christmas time of 2019 that the crypto YouTube purge took place, where a lot of channels on Christmas Eve um, were were given basically warnings or strikes and had videos removed. And that was my situation. Christmas Eve, I woke up, had uh, two videos removed and a warning. The next day on Christmas morning, I woke up, had a strike, another video removed and was told I couldn't put any content up for seven days. Wow. And I appealed that process, never heard anything back. But the next day, the 26th, the day after Christmas, everything was back to normal. All those videos were there and it was as if I never got a warning or a strike. Mm -hmm. But there was no explanation and there was a lot of other content creators who got affected at the time now we've been seeing some people over the past month or so that have been losing their channels and getting them back uh, i think data dash was one uh, crypto crow was another and you know i don't really think there's been any explanation i'm not sure if it's youtube trying to test out how people are going to react or if it's a situation where somebody's manipulating the system and you got people reporting and flagging videos and content creators. Now, as far as the recent uh, censorship that we're talking about with Bitcoin related content, um, there definitely has been a decline and a shadow banning of the content, not necessarily a censorship, because censorship would be outright removing it. But shadow banning is trying to uh, minimize its visibility on the platform, basically not promoting it. And what we're finding with a lot of content creators is their um, their analytics and on their back end, a lot of that is being affected by the views, the impressions, all that is gone down by uh, some, in some cases, up to 50% in a lot of people's cases. Now, some people are speculating that this is because um, Ripple is taking YouTube to court and they're suing YouTube over uh, an issue that we're seeing with live streams. Um, so you're seeing legitimate live streams, like I think the Coin Telegraph having party i think it got cut off by youtube yeah and that was a legitimate live stream and but you're seeing people who are buying other people's channels changing the name and putting up a picture saying ethereum and using vitalik's picture or putting up something about ripple and putting up a picture of somebody from ripple and they're doing this uh, they're doing it for bitcoin cash and a lot of different things but these these streams that are not legitimate, that are definitely scams that people are reporting are not getting taken off or removed, but you're seeing legitimate videos being removed. So I think that YouTube is in a way punishing the cryptocurrency community for Ripple, XRP Labs, or whoever it is that's actually suing YouTube. Mm -hmm. And they're suing because of one of these um, channels that's in, it's basically scamming people trying to pretend to be somebody at ripple which basically is defaming ripple so i understand what ripple's doing but i don't think they understand the, the consequences of the effects of how it's going to affect uh the entire industry because a lot of people are getting education and getting information from content creators on youtube and if youtube is shadow banning the videos meaning they're not making it come up in your suggestion you're not getting notifications because a lot and I've been dealing with this before the crypto YouTube purge because I am an outspoken anarchist and voluntarist. So I've been dealing with people being unsubscribed from my channel that don't unsubscribe. Mm -hmm. I've had people that tell me they don't get no, no notifications um, or they're not um, or their, their or their notification bell gets turned off and they don't turn it off. 
So, and then I get some people that tell me that they get everything like normal and there's no problem. So it's, it's very hard to figure out the algorithm, but there's definitely some censorship going on and a lot of shadow banning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's definitely a lot going on there. And without a proper explanation uh, from YouTube, you know, you can only speculate as to all of the different reasons. Now, do you think that part of the, maybe one of the reasons is to protect, you know, you mentioned that there's scams uh, and I have seen uh, some live streams where, you know, people put up a fake live stream and you send Bitcoin and they send you back double. And it sounds, you know, pretty scammy from, from the get-go, but there's obviously a lot of great, valuable educational content coming out as well. That's clearly mm -hmm. isn't a scam. You know, is YouTube blanketing this together and they're trying to protect individuals? You know, do you think that, um, or is, is it that we well, need to protect people because cryptocurrency is still new and, and you know, you don't want them to... Uh, risk something that they don't understand yet? Is that part of it? I don't know that the second part of what you said would necessarily be what's coming into play. I, I do know that since um, everything that's happened this year with the country being shut down because of various situations that I'm not going to mention just because of censorship and shadow banning, um, that, 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 that is basically being used as an excuse and a scapegoat in this situation. Mm -hmm. um, now, they're saying because of the situation that YouTube is not having as many employees at their office. And with that being said, they're running on an automated system. And they said this um, team YouTube several months ago said this, that basically they're running on an automated system that videos can and will be removed. Um, some that even don't even go against community guidelines and there may or may not be anything that people can do about it. And they just got to deal with it. Yeah. So the problem that we got going on with that, and I'm glad that you mentioned it, and I don't mean to like be hot winded about it, but this is definitely an important topic. And, and I'll basically say it as short as I can. YouTube needs to be defined as a public forum or a publisher. You mm -hmm. can't be both. And what that means is as a publisher, they can control their content. They can censor people and remove and all that good stuff. But as a public forum, they have the responsibility of giving freedom of speech which freedom of speech is a double-edged sword because I want to say what I want to say, but I also have to respect the fact that other people want to say what they want to say, whether or not I agree with it. But freedom of speech is the important factor here. Mm -hmm. And that's really what's under attack. And Prager University is suing YouTube to actually get them to define whether they are a publisher or a public forum. Mm -hmm. And a public forum, the way it would act is, I'll use like a public utility company, like your power company as an example. Because they are a public utility, they're not held responsible or liable for, let's say, I'm using that power for some illegal source. Like I live in North Carolina and it's illegal to grow marijuana. But if I was using the power to do that, the power company here is not held liable for that. Mm -hmm. So, but then you got to take into consideration that YouTube is a private company with stakeholders and they're obviously looking out for the best interests, you know, and they want profit. So yeah. they've got to figure out, are you a publisher or are you a public forum? And you really can't technically be both, but depending on how the outcome of this court proceeding goes and how like a verdict of, you know, like a jury decides to draw a verdict, they could in sense be a public forum and a publisher by definition, by law, which, would be um, really bad news for people who are speaking out against anything against the mainstream. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's good to see that you know something. It, it's getting attention, and as well, there are a lot of alternatives that are popping up, blockchain-based yes. alternatives as well. I know you're using Library, and we're backed up to Library as well. Uh, that seems to be one of the great ones, but there are quite a few of the other ones as well. Um, so. It doesn't have the same network effect as YouTube, but it does provide a another alternative to have that freedom of speech if you need it. Well, it also gives you um, the the idea that you know that your content is still going to be available if YouTube decides to you be the one. Like, let's say they cut my channel off or your channel off. I know that 100% right now that all my stuff is going to be, and I'm using not only library, but I use three speak, which uses the hive blockchain. And I'm also using BitTubers at the moment. So I've got my stuff backed up on multiple sites so that if something happens, I at least haven't lost my content and that my work is still available to, you know, be, be available for people to be able to watch which is the point. So, um, ultimately it's just kind of having that extra layer of security. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And, 
you know, we're running out of time, but I really wanted to touch on one of the focal points of your channel. You know, it's not as much crypto related, but you seem to talk about it a lot. And this is uh, practicing change. You know, what does that mean to you? Yeah, and I really appreciate you asking me this because a lot of people don't ask me. And I'm sorry I got long winded on some of these other topics. But to keep this short and sweet, uh, we talk about changing the world with these technologies of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and blockchain, like this disruption it can cause and how it can make things better for us as human as humans. So basically, the idea with practice change is that we get to practice every day being a better person. Mm -hmm. And we get to do this by learning from everything that we do, uh, good or bad, positive or negative. And by being the change, you get to influence other people also to be that change because, you know, essentially a lot of people complain about things they don't like in this world. But instead of complaining about things they don't like, be that change and exemplify that. And if you live that, then it starts to have that effect on people around you. And I think it all ties together because if we talk about change in the world with these technologies like Bitcoin, blockchain, then, you know, we're going to continue to have the same problems as humanity that we've been having if we don't evolve as well. So I think it's kind of important for us as a species to evolve as well as trying to evolve our technologies. Very well said, Rice. How can people follow your work and get in touch with you? Okay, so yeah, you can find me on YouTube and Library mainly are my main channels. Library, I post exclusive content. That's Rice Crypto at two words. I also have a Patreon channel I started recently. You can find me on Patreon, obviously, at Rice Crypto and pretty much everywhere on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at Rice Crypto. Great, Rice. I'll leave those links in the description box below as well. And thank you so much for taking the time, man. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. I'm looking forward to the future and following up soon. I definitely enjoyed it. Thank you.